caught me getting high. Didn't know what I was doing, just saw tears streaming from my eyes. Thought maybe it was something that he had done. Sat right next to my left leg, rubbed my back, and assured me everything was okay. Wondered if I was crying because I caught a call from his teacher or if it was because he had a red day. Didn't know that the last five years had mowed downs and ups. And everything that was tried just didn't seem to be enough. See, mama's dreams were a bit robust. But the fire that once burned within was now starting to lose its thrust. Piddling positions, inadequate by measure. College degrees had no meaning when there was no heat to warm the shelter. Water pots ensured evening baths were hot, but cold water washes couldn't get everything clean. So restrictions had to be put on clothes worn. Oh, why the play children asked my son, didn't you have that on yesterday? And I said it was only for an hour, now go on outside if you really wanna play. But ain't it funny how things change? See, when I was a child, I promised I would never be the same. I would be more than what my parents showed me. Not saying my life was foul, but I grew up knowing how it felt to go without. See, every day was a struggle, and sometimes we went to bed with no food to eat. But the dark night showed us when the ends didn't meet. Insurance was always the first to go. But New Year's resolution secured doctor and dental appointments, and we had to go. Car and phone stayed paid, even if off work they were laid, because we were the Joneses. So if we were starving, you would never know. But not my children. I had plans. I was going to be married before I bore. Me, my husband, and two children would live like the Huxtables. Instead, I'll be the writer, and he'd be the doctor, and our children would have a different world. I, free in my being, could play his nurse, and he would birth our son and little girl. But ain't it funny? Ain't it funny how things change? He met me while I was on this stage, yet being an artist was the equivalent to being unemployed. Unstable is what he called it. Childhood dreams taken a bit too far now since we have children, cars, picket fence, front and backyard. He said, quit. I said, I thought I wasn't employed. He said, be a mother, as if that was a duty I had ignored. But there it was on the table. Your family or your artistry choose. Never perplexed about what I had to do, but why should I have to bow down to a fool? Slavery versus freedom, giving versus receiving for the sake of the children. And he thought this be an ultimatum I could not refuse. So I leaned into the if Isabella Bonfrey and told her she wrote this poem for me before I looked him square in the eye and said, ain't I a woman? Then being a mother is something I'm going to always be. Be it to you, this earth, all my children. I came here to birth water and nourish the seed. So if you think I'm going to leave or close the curtain because you feeling like a shadow, then maybe it's your stability that should be questioned in this court battle. But ain't it funny how things change? I never considered myself a user or an abuser. Lived that struggle while it ran its course through my daddy's line. Promised to quit, but like an addict, one hit was never enough and getting another one was always on my mind. Every chance on that line, stolen moments of enjoyment, entertaining and repugnant, but I had to write. Those dead trees injected life into my night and every night to just ease my state of mind. Langston warned me about those dreams deferred, but never did I think people would hate on the pedagogy of words. So I'm in dark places, moonlighting just to formulate subjects and verbs, hiding dotted I's, crossing T's when he left I, cause his nouns have been my, independent clauses, because his nouns have been attacking my independent clauses. And I'm fighting for my children as a litigant, 
Respondent, state your name and occupation. Yes, I am Tasha Jones. I'm a literary addict fighting to keep my children while creating an environment with no casualties or fatalities. I just want to be an intellectual property studied in textbooks, laureate of poetry. Speaking at your seminars, donating millions to young scholars, brave new voices, guest speaking at your conferences and your churches, sitting in those big yellow chairs between the president and Oprah. Try this for your headline news. Seven-year-old boy tells counselor at school, my mama gets high off of poetry. It makes her giddy. We are not struggling for literature, but we may be a little math needy. She takes us to coffee houses and theater shows. We've already met the last poets and seen August Wilson's lessons in pianos. My sister, she likes vibrato and, and I like prose. And sometimes we leave early so daddy won't bloody her nose. And sometimes they argue about why she won't let it go and she say those are just letters and words. She says she got to hold on to teach us how to dream. My daddy say she addicted, but she just mommy the we. And he caught me getting high. Thank you. Thank you.